Hi, welcome back to Game Geeks. I'm your host, Kurt Weigel. Today we're doing something a little bit different. Because Spirit of the Century and Fate, the game we reviewed earlier, has such a unique sort of engine about it, and it's almost artsy, I thought it really warranted a another look at it, or a closer look. So we're doing sort of a special episode of Game Geeks today, which is a more in-depth look at the Fate engine. Now, to do this, I have with me my friend, who's actually run more of Fate than I have, my friend Ys. Say hi to the hi to people, Ys. Hi, people. So, there you go. So he's a natural. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. We are going to sort of take a look at how this works in terms of the dicing, in terms of the success ladder, and the use of Fate points, both for the player and against. So... Go right ahead. Um, okay, well, uh, like you said in the uh, uh, review before, there are uh, special dice that are used for um, the Fate engine. Uh, since they have uh, fudge dice that you can get on the site, I believe, but there was this really neat um, um, conversion chart to take regular D6 and turn them into uh, Fate die. Uh, so I have, uh, I turned Basically, the sides, some of the sides have minuses, some of the sides have squares, and some of the sides have pluses on them. The ones with minuses give you a minus to your roll. The ones with pluses give you a plus to your roll, and the squares don't add anything. You always roll four dice whenever you're rolling for anything, um, and that's the fate portion of the game. And everything's pitted against a ladder uh, that determines uh, your variable success on any particular roll. Okay, so for any skill, any attribute, any attempt, it always uses the same ladder. It's a unified mechanic that way. Right, exactly. All right. Well, let's take a look at that ladder real quick. You can see it here. What you see with it is the fact that it ranges around a pretty broad set of uh, descriptors, but it's really a pretty simple, I think it goes from like plus eight to negative two, legendary down to terrible. Mm -hmm. Now, so let's say we start at a basis of, say, good, and we roll the four dice. Now, I got... um, Let's say I got this, which turns into one plus and four zeros, so we go from good plus one up to great. So that's sort of how the engine works that way? Right, exactly. And, you know, you would have, obviously, you're pitting whatever you're rolling against uh, to a specific difficulty. So, like, let's say you're rolling against your gun skill, okay, and your gun skill is at good. You would be rolling the fate dice, and you rolled uh, great because you added a plus one from your plus. And if you beat the other person's dodge skill or athletics roll um, by whatever, you'd create shift and um, basically become successful on the roll, which would uh, then cause the opponent to take damage or whatever, you know, it might happen, whatever it might be. So it doesn't necessarily need to be guns. It could be anything. You could be rolling uh, for uh, social situations. You could be rolling for really anything in the game. So really there's two levels of health here, right? There's right. there's a physical and sort of a mental or social health. What are those? Uh, well, you have uh, your health bar and your composure bar. Health okay. dealing with physical damage, and the composure is dealing with... Um, your mental capacity to take stress. Uh, Let's say, for instance, that you're trying to seduce somebody. You would roll your rapport against their resolve. Uh, If you roll higher uh, than whatever their resolve is, um, they'll take uh, points, hit, they'll they'll take points off of their composure box. Okay. Once all of their composure boxes are filled, they have consequences, a minor consequence, a a medium consequence, and a major consequence. So an example of a minor consequence, maybe maybe they're a little shaken, or they don't know quite what's going on. A major is they're tripping over their words, or they're fumbling. Uh, uh, That would be a moderate, and like a major would be they just can't talk. Now, is that the end of it for them? For example, if that's the health bar, the major consequence, are they down for the count? Can they not do anything? Is that the typical unconsciousness or death? Well, it's up to the. It's really up to the GM. It all depends on what's happening, you know, in the situation. But definitely, once health bars have been taken out and consequences have been filled, then they're taken out for that scene. Okay. Um, so it, it could mean death, depending on if they're alone and they're, you know, hordes and hordes of minions all over them. But uh, most of the time, they're definitely taken out, knocked out, whatever it might be. That's sort of keeping with the pulp genre, too. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. very rarely do our heroes die. Right. They might be taken out. They right. might be strung up over the pit of the spider god. Right. So. Well, and in this game, they give you a lot of aspects that you can use fate points to try and uh, re-roll things. They give you a lot of stunts, which are only invocable uh, as a positive uh, towards your okay. character. That's in between a stunt and aspect. Yes. See, I think that's a, a big confusion that I've been reading a lot on the forums, and just we've had with game, is understanding what the difference between an aspect is and a stunt is. An aspect can be invoked either negatively or positively, and you aren't the only person invoking it, and you always have to pay a fate point. Okay. Stunts, on the other hand, are always positive, and they're always there to help you. There's something intrinsic about how your character is going to function in game. 
Um, so uh, one of the characters that we had in the last game that we played, he was uh, the strong man in the game, and he really made his aspects revolve around around his strength, and he also made his stunts revolve around his strength. And it really made him so that when he was in uh, any situation where he had to roll for might, you know, where he's grappling or pushing against stuff, he was doing awesome because he had all of his stunts uh, piled up to really help him with that. But if it came to something like a composure roll for seduction, he would be terrible at it. Okay. So let's talk about, let's say, a, a quick combat with uh, Jet Black and a Nemesis. Okay. Where he's running down a hallway someplace to mm -hmm. go stop Dr. Methuselah. <laughs> right. To stop him from setting off the time bomb that will destroy New York by pulling it out of time. Right. That's a very pulpy thing that he might be trying to do. Yeah. So if he's squaring off against a minion, how would the combat start? Like, what would happen? Let's say that Jet, let's say that Jet Black gets the drop on him, so we don't have to worry about, like, an initiative roll or something. Okay. Normally, if you were worrying about that, you'd roll for alertness. Alertness uh, is your initiative. Is the initiative. Okay. So always roll in that, and that defines where it is. Whenever there was ties, something I did was have him, you know, do rock, paper, scissors to break the tie. But okay. But you can do whatever to so figure So because he has an alertness, sorry to interrupt you, but if no, he has an alertness of plus one, that means he would roll the four dice versus right. the plus one. And I rolled heinously bad at a minus one, which drops it to a zero. Zero. Mediocre. Which drops it to a zero. Okay. Right. So if he's fighting this guy and we need to tag aspects. Okay. So let's say I wanted to re-roll that somehow. Okay. Could I say first on the scene, mm -hmm. use yep. that aspect, pay you a fate point, right. and either re-roll all of these die. Or give yourself a stagnant plus two to the roll. So that might jump it up from zero to plus two or fair. Right. So properly done, fate points should really be flying across the mm. table left and right. Very much so. So, so this seems like it's, it's a very rules-light game. It's a mm -hmm. thick book, but mostly it's examples and alternate rules. Right. So don't be don't be put off by this. Honestly, this is the sort of game, in my opinion, that you could really run without ever having to open the book again. No, and actually, they ask you to not. They really don't want you to go every time that you're worried about a rule, like, oh, I don't know if I did that right. Don't go looking back in the book. Make something up that works for the situation. You can go back and check it out, see if it works, see if it didn't work. And that's really what we've uh, been doing and had a lot of success with. Okay. There's um, some things, they give an example about, you know, rolling your fists instead of might for wrestling in, in the book, you know, and you do that in game. Well, you know, you talk with, it's really, it's really quite easy. You just talk with your players and see what you want to decide and, and and, you know, you change the rule then or whatever. So we made it. Uh, the other thing that we did with the game that was really helpful was uh, I allowed, as long as they didn't use an aspect or an aspect wasn't invoked or compelled against them, they, uh, they could um, rewrite that aspect later on in okay. the game to give them a little bit more control. So. All right. Well, thank you very much, folks. Spirit of the Century, Fate, the Engine in general. It's good if you want, if, if you're not into a whole lot of necessary rules and crunch, mm -hmm. and if you want to try something different, it's a good pulp game. There's also the pop, there's also the upcoming Dresden Files game that will be an urban fantasy. Uh, a lot of good stuff coming out of Evil Hat Studios, so keep watching. For Game Geeks, I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Good day and good gaming.